Hello again. This week, I'm going to take a look at a clue that has a little bit more going on than we've been looking at so far. I've used quite simple examples up till now. Things that only have one piece of functionality going on or one sort of theme. This clue, I can't remember where I found it, so apologies to whoever wrote this. It's probably the Times or the Guardian Observer. Um, but it has quite a lot going on. You've got different bits of functionality. You've got different ideas behind the building of the clue. So it makes quite a good example to go through a little bit more slowly than I normally do and to really explain how to pick it apart. So we'll have a little look at that. Who made mummy baked bream with lemon? Question mark. Not on! Exclamation mark. Eight letters. Who made mummy baked bream with lemon? Question mark. Not on! Exclamation mark. Eight letters. Now, this is a classic one, I think, that a lot of people, if you're just starting out doing cryptic crosswords or you pick one up and you've never done one before, you'll open the newspaper, read that and just think, what is this? What on earth does that mean? It, it, it looks like complete nonsense at first. But, same fundamental principles as ever. Definition, wordplay. You need to look for bits of the clue that you think might be functionality and see what they might do and then sort of feel your way into the clue via that. So, you have to look for things that might affect other parts of the word or parts of the answer. So, not on, not on exclamation mark. Punctuation here, I know I said a lot about question marks and how they affect things quite a lot. That's really not doing a great deal in this clue, but I know there's no way of knowing that. So my apologies, there's no way of knowing that before you sort of solve it. The not on, looks an awfully lot like you will either remove the letters O and N, or perhaps it will be off, not on, off, or not on in the sense of prohibited. So it could just be no or something. You could have an exclamation. That's what that does. It makes you think that you might have um, an exclamation, no, nay, something negative in the answer. The exclamation mark in that case then becomes a little bit misleading. It makes you look for an exclamation. But, in fact, that's going to have quite a different effect. But the, the key, the key to the first stages of solving the clue is to think, I think that is doing something. That is not the definition. That is doing something, it's affecting another word, or it is a piece of substitution itself. So that means, to, to get the definition, I'm going to have to look at the other end. Always one under the other. So you have to look at the other end for your definition. You're also thinking that baked... Baked is one of the more curious anagram indicators. So you're thinking this can indicate an anagram somewhere. So it could be mummy baked, baked bream, but you're thinking that something might revolve around this. It's an active word, so it might be playing a part in constructing the clue. You've got the with, which makes you think, okay, something is going with something else. So the functionality is all looking like it's happening down this end, which means definition of the other. So then you get who made mummy baked. Maybe you could include baked in the definition. If someone got your mum high, <laughs> that, could, uh, that could, be, could be an answer. But you're likely looking at who made mummy. Now, if you think all functionality is down this end, definition is at this end. Who made mummy? Slightly odd definition. Now, it's possible that the question mark is supposed to make you think a slight joke is happening here. It could just be to set up the structure of the clue grammatically. But there's also the chance that it's saying, this isn't exactly, you know, this is not your grandparents. Your grandparents made mummy, but mummy in the Egyptian sense, slightly different. So you're starting to think down that road, who made mummies, Egyptians, etc. But then what's going on with the rest of this? You need eight letters. If this could possibly be an anagram indicator, if you're thinking that's definition, then those five, you've got five coming out of bream. Baked bream with lemon. Baked bream with lemon is five and five, ten. Too, too many letters. But not on actually means remove those two letters from lemon. Baked bream with lem is eight letters and that's the right number for your answer. So you had an anagram indicator, you had the thing it was going to be an anagram of with, and normally in anagrams, it would be the next set of letters. 
but this with this simply means those five and those five, but without these four in the middle. So you haven't got too many until you get lemon and that is five. You take away the on from lemon and eventually you know that you're just unscrambling those five and those three and you'll end up with the word embalmer, the person who made mummy. Now technically of course that should be maybe who made mummies if it was a generalized thing so this is a good example of a clue with quite a lot going on because you've got an anagram split over two words, you have to modify one of those words and you have to look for a definition that's a little bit of a wink and a nudge, you know, it's a little bit of a, a flimsy one in a sense. But that's the kind of lateral jumps you have to make when you're, look, when you're looking at clues like this. So all I wanted to do with this was to say that when you see that enormous load of nonsense and you really look at a clue and think, I have no idea what's going on. Just start by, it's a bit sort of, it is trial and error. Just start by thinking which pieces might be function and what might they do? Which pieces might be substitution? Do I have to do anything with them? Feel your way towards it. Throw something at the wall, see if it sticks and say, okay, if I have baked bream with, I've got nine and then I need one letter to be taken away. How does that work? It doesn't. So the, you work with not on, you think maybe off. Pick parts of the clue, break it down, always break it down into individual sections, see if they do anything, and then see if you can then understand more of the other sections from the ones you've worked out. It can be quite a long process, but, and sometimes it can take you 20 minutes of staring before you get into the rhythm of thinking in that way, but break it down bit by bit, try each individual section, see if anything happens that with the more advanced clues, that's the way to get at them. And always look for your definition if you can, but feel your way towards it by splitting it into bits that will do something, bits that will mean something. And I might sort of expand on this, take a few more difficult clues and think them through very slowly um, in the future. So hopefully that will be helpful and eventually you'll be solving the really, really tricky ones. So for now, happy solving. <laughs>